Welcome to this WiseL tutorial on DAX for Power BI. In this part of the series, we're going to be looking at how to write basic calculated columns. So we're going to start by talking about the important concept of row context when it comes to calculated columns. And then we'll look at the basics of referencing columns in your expressions, how to write comments and use multiple lines to make your expressions easier to read, how to control the order of operation using round brackets or parentheses, how to use existing calculated columns in subsequent expressions. We'll look at a couple of basic functions, how you can manipulate data types and how DAX treats them in the first place. And finally, to wrap up, a quick look at how to concatenate text. So quite a lot to do in this one. Let's get started. To get started, I've created a new blank report. And the first thing I'll do in here is import some sample data from an Excel workbook. So I'll click on the fairly obvious button on the home tab of the ribbon and then browse to where I've saved my Excel movies workbook. I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download this file and follow along using the same set of sample data. When you have it, you can just double click on the file to begin importing it. When the import wizard loads, it shows me there's a single worksheet in the workbook also called movies. So I can check the box next to that, have a quick look at the sample data and then click the load button to start importing it. When all of the information has been imported, I'll see a list of fields in the fields list on the right hand side of the screen. So I can see the table name and then if I click the little arrow symbol to the left of that, it shows me a list of all the columns from that table. If I wanted to, I could start creating my calculated columns in this same report view that we're currently looking at. So I could right click on the movies table and then choose new column. I could then begin writing my DAX expression, but the problem with doing things that way is that when I enter the expression, I don't get to see the results of it immediately. So what I prefer to do is head over here to the left hand side of the screen and find the second button of these three, which will take me to the data view of our report. There I can see any existing data that I've already imported. And when I create new columns in here, I'll be able to see their results immediately. I think that a calculated column is usually the simplest type of DAX expression to understand. They're often very similar in principle to a formula you might create in an Excel worksheet. There are a few differences, of course. In Excel, you tend to be thinking in terms of references to single individual cells. Whereas in DAX and Power BI, we need to think in terms of references to entire columns. In Excel, you'd probably create a formula in the top row of the table and then manually fill that formula downwards to create the answer for each row. In DAX and Power BI, we create a single expression for the entire column and that automatically calculates a different result for each row by iterating through the rows of the table using something called the row context to work out which values the expression has to work with for that row. That probably feels like quite a lot of jargon to throw at you this early in the course, but a lot of those concepts and keywords are really important to understand. So I think it's worthwhile getting them introduced as early as possible. So for our first example, we're going to work out a fairly boring answer. Actually. We're going to work out the net profit for each film by subtracting the budget from the box office. So in order to do that, we'll need to reference the budget column and the box office column to create an expression. That expression will iterate through the rows in the table using the row context to work out which values to use for each different answer. Now we have several different choices for how we can start adding our new column to the table. One way would be to right click on either the movie's table name or any of the columns in that table in the fields list and choose new column. We could also do the same thing by right clicking on any existing column in the data view of our report. So we could right click on a column and choose new column from that menu instead. We also have buttons on the ribbon. So in the column tools tab, there's a new column button there. And also on the table tools tab, there's a new column button there. More choice than we really need. Pick one of those options and create your new column to insert the new column to the right hand side of the table. That always happens, doesn't matter what you have selected first. And it also activates the formula bar showing you the name assigned to your new column. Not a great name, we'll change that in just a moment. But just to make sure you can actually see the text, it's probably worthwhile zooming in on the formula bar. 
So I can do this by hovering the mouse cursor over the formula bar, and if I have a scroll wheel on my mouse, I can hold down the control key and roll the mouse wheel forwards. And of course I can control and roll the mouse wheel backwards to zoom back out. If you don't have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can hold down the control key and press the equals key to zoom in, and you can press control and the minus key to zoom out. Regardless of which technique you've used there, let's change the column name to say something a little more descriptive. Let's call this, let's call it net or net profit if you prefer. You can have spaces in your column names, by the way, it's perfectly acceptable in DAX. These column names will be used to, to label the visualizations you'd create in the report. So not having to replace underscores or put spaces in between compound words is quite a nice feature of the DAX language. I'd like to keep things a little simpler. I'm just going to call my column net. So I'll backspace off the word profit. And then after the equal sign, I need to start referencing columns. So I've got to reference the box office column first. And again, we've got lots of choices for here for how we can do this. By far and away, the simplest way to get a reference to the box office column is just to start typing in that column's name. So I'll start by typing in the letter B. And that brings up a list called the IntelliSense list, a silly name for a really useful feature. Now you're going to see lots of different types of things in the IntelliSense. The symbol FX indicates that that item is a built-in DAX function. We'll be using a few functions a little later in this video. This symbol here that's supposed to show sort of a, a shaded in column in a table indicates that this is a reference to a column. And that's what I want to do. I want to reference the box office column. So I can either then start using the arrow keys to start scrolling through this list to highlight movies box office, or just continue typing the reference that I want. So I can carry on typing the word box, or in fact, even BO is sufficient to have that one highlighted. The list automatically filters itself based on what you've typed in so far. Once I've got the word highlighted, I can either press enter or tab to type in the rest of that word. And that's the simplest way by far to reference that column. I can then optionally type in a space character and then I'm going to type in a minus symbol and then I can optionally type in another space. And then I can start referencing the budget column in the same way. Let's start typing in the word budget. So again, I get movies budget. I can then press enter to highlight uh, or insert the rest of that word. And once I've done that, I can then either press enter or click this tick on the left hand side of the formula bar to create my expression. And you should see that when that's happened, it automatically populates every single row in the next column and it calculates a different answer by using the values provided to the expression according to the row context. I'd just like to talk about a few alternative ways to reference columns in your expressions and also how you can edit an existing expression. First of all, if you don't have the column with your expression in it selected, you won't see the expression in the formula bar. So step number one is to reselect that column either in the data view or even just in the fields list. If I click on the net column there, it will redisplay my expression. And then I can edit in the, in the formula bar just by selecting the text. So I'm going to delete everything after the equal sign, apart from the space. And then this time I'd like to reference the same two columns, but without preceding the column names with the table names. Now, in order to make that work, I need to type in a different symbol to begin with. Of course, if I start typing in box office, it shows me the qualified column name as we saw earlier. If I take backspace off the letter B and begin by typing in a square bracket symbol instead, I get a list of non-qualified column names. And I also don't get my list populated with any functions. This list is limited to only column names in this table. So I can highlight box office and press enter or tab and then type in the minus symbol, type in some square brackets again, and then refer to the budget column, press enter or tab, and then press enter to create the expression again. 
Now it's actually really good practice, even though this formula is much shorter and perhaps even easier to read, it's better practice to always qualify column references with the names of the tables to which they belong. This will become more important the more complicated a data model you're working with and the more complicated an expression you're writing. Not every column reference can be uh, left like this without its table name in front of it. So I'm going to once again edit this formula and I'm going to get rid of everything after the equal sign again. You noticed earlier on when I started typing in just the name of a column like with the letter B, it filters the list to include function names. Ideally, I'd like to see this list filtered only for qualified column names, so table names followed by column names. So one way to make that work is to type in a single quote character. A single quote character, an apostrophe, can be used to enclose the name of a table. So hopefully you can see in this list here, the movie's table name is enclosed in single quotes. Sometimes it's necessary to do that. When your table names contain a space, you need to delimit the table name by wrapping it inside a set of single quotes. Additionally, if your table name was a reserved keyword, you'd need to indicate it was a, an identifier by wrapping single quotes around it. So having typed in the single quote character here, I could then start typing in the word box office again, but that will filter the list immediately to movies box office. And I can press tab or enter to type that in. Then my space minus space, single quotes, and then budget, tab or enter, and then enter once more to recreate my formula again. Another thing it's worthwhile getting into the habit of very early when writing DAX is adding comments to your code so that you can remind yourself what you were trying to do when you come back to look at this expression in two months time. I have to admit I'm pretty bad at adding comments to my own code, but I always inevitably regret not adding comments at the time I was writing my expression. So as you've probably come to expect by this point, there are multiple different ways we can add comments to our DAX expressions. One important rule about adding comments is that any comments must follow the column name and the equals sign, so I can't add any comments before that point. I could add a comment to the end of the existing line. So if I type a space after a reference to the budget column, we could add a comment using a couple of different characters. If you are familiar with SQL, you may favor adding the double dash or the double hyphen, the double minus symbol to add your comments. So I can type in dash dash and then say a comment. Uh, it's not a very exciting comment. But it's about as good as the comments I actually add to my own code. Um, if you come from a different programming background, maybe Visual C Sharp or, or similar languages, you may favor the forward slash forward slash character instead. And again, this would be a comment. You can always spot a comment in Microsoft products because it turns this lovely shade of green. So it's just descriptive text that doesn't have any effect on the calculation. You can also add multi-line comments. If I wanted to add a new line to this expression, what I do is press shift and enter at the end of this line. It has to be shift and enter because enter by itself just enters the formula. So shift and enter to throw a new line. And then I can type in either dash dash and a comment or forward slash forward slash and a comment or for multiple line comments, a forward slash followed by an asterisk and then shift and enter to head down to the next line and then a shift and enter, multi-line, shift and enter, comment, shift and enter, and then asterisk forward slash to close off that comment block. You may be familiar with these uh, concepts from other Microsoft programming languages, but it's worthwhile a quick little recap of those various ways of adding comments. You've noticed as well that I've added multiple lines to my actual expression here. I'm just going to highlight and then delete all of those lines of code. And then it's worthwhile mentioning that DAX doesn't restrict you to writing formulae in one continuous long line. If I wanted to, I could say net equals, and then after the space, press shift and enter. And then I would probably tab in, indent this line of code one space by pressing the tab key to make it a little easier to read. 
So this allows me to add a comment after the name of my column. So I could insert a comment in the middle of the expression. Let's say forward slash forward slash a basic formula to calculate movie profit or something along those lines. And having done all that, I can either press enter or click the tick and that will update my formula to include the comment without affecting the answer it produces. Now, as this is a DAX for Power BI course, I do want to show you a few things that aren't strictly DAX related. So I've got my net column. It's pretty much ready for use to be dropped into some visuals in my report, but there are a couple of basic things I might want to do to save myself effort later on. So with the net column selected, I'm gonna head over to the column tools tab and I've got a few options for changing the data type that's been generated, applying a format and choosing a default summarization. So let's say, for example, if I have ever add the net column to a visual, I want it to calculate the average of that column rather than the sum, which is the current default. So for the summarization option, I can change that to say average instead. I can also apply a default format to that column. So again, with net selected, I'm gonna format this with US dollars. So if I click on the dollar symbol for the currency formats and find English United States, and then that will format the results in the data view. But also now, if I head over to the report view by clicking on the first button of the three on the left-hand side of the screen, I can create any visualizations I like. Let's create a really basic table by clicking on the table tool. I'm going to insert the genre field into there by checking the box next to genre. And then I'll find my net column, check the box next to that and find that it's added into the visual, formatted with US dollars and showing the average net rather than the sum that it would ordinarily have created. Next, I'd like to create a new calculated column to demonstrate something important about the order of operation. I'm afraid the example is going to be no more exciting than the previous one, but it will be a little more complicated because it involves three column references in the same formula. We're going to once again subtract the budget from the box office, and then we're going to divide the result of that by the box office. So let's head back to the data view and then we'll create a new column in your preferred way of the four we have access to. I'm gonna click my new column button and then I'll change the column name. Let's call this profit margin equals. Now to begin with, I'm going to refer to the box office column by typing in the word box and then pressing tab to type in the highlighted movies box office and then minus budget and then divided by, using a forward slash character, the box office column again. I haven't got quite enough room to write that out onto a single line, so it might be worthwhile thinking about splitting this across two lines by pressing shift and enter after the equals operator, and then tab to indent that line one space. Okay, so at that point, I'm going to either press enter or click the tick. And I'm gonna find that the result of this is a little larger than I was expecting. Profit margin should be, uh, should be in terms of percentages. That's a pretty big percentage profit margin. I don't think that's quite right. So the order of operation, just like in other Microsoft products, we're following uh, Bodmus or Pedmus rules, if you prefer. So brackets, orders, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction or for PEDMAS, it's uh, parentheses and exponents rather than brackets and orders. So basically, the, uh, the division is taking precedence over the subtraction. I want to perform this operation first, but Power BI is performing this operation first and then subtracting the result from the box office. So to control the order of operation, just as you'd expect from other Microsoft products, you can wrap a set of round brackets or parentheses around the operations you want to perform first. So this will now subtract budget from box office and then divide the result of that by the box office. So if I press enter or click the tick now, we'll see a much smaller result, which is a little more like what I was expecting. Again, we can apply some basic formatting to that column now that we've created it. So with the profit margin column selected, let's just apply the basic percentage format to that. 
and that looks a little neater and easier to read. Now there is a slightly simpler way we could have solved this problem. We already have a column which performs this expression in box office minus budget, so there's nothing to stop us from referencing our existing calculated column in a subsequent expression. When you create a calculated column in DAX or Power BI, the results of the calculation are loaded into the data model, so they're available for use for subsequent calculations. So let's just remove the parenthesized or the bracketed expression, box office minus budget. I'll delete that or backspace that, and then I can say net, and I'll highlight movies net in the list and press the tab key to insert it. And if I then either click the tick or press enter, I'll end up with exactly the same results, just with a much shorter, simpler to read expression. Now, whenever you're performing a division, there's always the danger of introducing some kind of error, particularly when your dataset is as poorly populated as the one I provided you with. Um, just to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm going to change the sorting in the data view of our profit margin column. If I click on the drop down arrow just at the top of the column, I'm going to choose to sort in ascending order. Although you might be able to make out already from the list of available options what the problem actually is. But if I sort in ascending order, you can see I've got a lot of negative infinity values by trying to divide the, uh, the results by a non-existent box office. So I didn't have data for every single value in this, uh, this list. So rather than performing a division like so, just with the regular divisor symbol, we can use a function built into DAX that allows us to perform a safe divide. And rather than producing some kind of error like this, it will produce a blank value for us instead. So to use that, let's edit our profit margin formula. And after the equal sign on the same line, I'm going to look for the divide function. Once I've got the divide function highlighted in the list, I can press the tab key or the enter key to type in the rest of the expression. With functions, just like in Excel, the IntelliSense pops up with a tooltip to show you which parameters the function has. So the divide function has three parameters, numerator, denominator, alternate result. Always the parameters are separated by commas. Any optional parameters are listed in square brackets and the entire set of arguments that you provide must be enclosed in a set of round brackets. So we already have the numerator and denominator. I'm not going to bother specifying an alternate result. All we need to do is change the forward slash symbol there, the divide symbol for a comma instead. Now it's entirely up to you how you lay out code like this. When I'm writing longer expressions involving multiple arguments that I'm passing to parameters of a function, I tend to like putting each argument on a separate line. So I'm going to get rid of that space after the comma, press shift and enter to move the movie's box office reference to the next line. Um, and no, it doesn't matter whether you place your commas at the end of a line or at the beginning of a line. I guess if you're more of an SQL developer, then you might prefer putting your commas at the beginning of a line rather than at the end. I'm not here to judge. So choose whichever technique you are most comfortable with. One thing we do need to do is close the round brackets at the end. And again, there are various places we could put the closed round brackets. We could place it here at the end of this line. But the convention in DAX is to place the closed round bracket on a line so that it's at the same indent level as the line which opened that round bracket. So ideally, this closed round bracket should be at the same indent level as the first line in this expression. So I'm going to press shift and enter and then close the round brackets. And you'll see that to conform with that convention, the closed round bracket automatically outdented itself to that position. So having done that, we could hit the tick or press enter and we'll update the formula. And now there are no longer any negative infinity values in that column. They've all been replaced with blanks instead. One final important concept it's worthwhile talking about in this introductory video is how DAX treats data types. And the first example we'll use to demonstrate that is to work out the cost per minute of each film. 
To do that, we're going to take the budget column and divide it by the runtime column. And the thing I want to focus on here is what data type these two columns currently have. So with the budget column selected, you can see the data type there is a whole number. Likewise, if I highlight the runtime column, that's also a whole number. Now, depending on which sort of background you come from when you first are introduced to DAX, you may be expecting one of two different things to happen when we create this formula. So if we've got two whole numbers going into a formula, should the end result also be a whole number? Or should DAX convert the whole number into a decimal to produce a more accurate answer? So your predictions, please. And let's find out which is the truth. So let's create a new column. I'm going to call this one cost per minute. And we'll use the divide function that we've just been introduced to. So let's go for divide, then hit the tab key to insert the formula and then shift and enter before we fill in the first argument. So we're going to go for the budget column followed by a comma. And then on the next line, we'll say runtime and then shift and enter and close the round brackets. You'll notice I didn't do any of the indenting or outdenting there myself. This standard kind of pattern when you're filling in function arguments and closing the round brackets, DAX or Power BI at least is pretty happy to do the, the indenting for you. Of course, you can change that if you don't like what DAX does automatically and feel free to add comments at any point. Um, get into better habits than I have. So I'm going to add a quick comment performs a safe divide or a safe division, I should say. OK, so who was correct? Are we going to get a whole number as the result or are we going to get a decimal number as the result? If I click the tick, we'll find out. And the answer is we actually get a decimal result. Now, people who come from a, an, an SQL background may well be quite surprised by that. But DAX does convert data types automatically or implicitly when it thinks it's sensible to do so. So we put two whole numbers into the formula, but we got a decimal result instead. For this first example, I think the implicit type conversion of whole numbers into a decimal was quite a useful thing. It gave us a more accurate answer. But there are occasions where the implicit type conversion can be quite annoying as well. To demonstrate that, the next example we'll create, I want to calculate a descriptive label for the runtime field. So currently we're just displaying the number of runtime in minutes for use maybe as a tooltip on a chart or as a label somewhere, I'd like to convert these values into hours and minutes. So for example, the number 138 would become 2H18M or two hours, 18 minutes, if we want something more descriptive again. The first part in calculating that final label would be to divide the runtime minutes by 60 and get the whole number of hours for that runtime. So let's start with that. Let's create a new column and I'm going to call this one runtime label. Try again, runtime label, I'll get there eventually. OK, after the equal sign, I'm going to begin by dividing runtime by 60. And once again, let's use our safe divide function. So I'll look for the divide function. And I'm going to put this onto a single line this time rather than break it across multiple lines. So we'll say runtime or movies runtime, comma 60, and then close the round brackets and hit enter. So just as we saw earlier, this converts the whole number of runtime and the whole number 60 into a decimal number to try to give us an accurate answer. But this isn't quite what I want. I want to get just the number two for this first part of the calculation because I want to add the letter H after the number two or the word hours. Likewise, the number 1.81, I want to get just the number one. If I try to achieve this by changing the data type from decimal number to whole number, or by changing the format and reducing the decimal places down to none, both of those options would have the effect of rounding up this number so 
uh, 1.8 would become 2, 1.9 would become 2, 3.8 would become 4, and that's definitely not what I want to happen here. So instead, I want to calculate the whole number or integer portion of this answer. To get that to work, we're going to wrap another function around the divide function. So let's say we'll go for the function called int, which is short for integer, round a number down to the nearest integer or whole number. So int, open up some round brackets, and then close an extra set of round brackets at the end. So at the moment we have a decimal number as the data type. If we hit enter now, that will strip off the decimal portion of the number, returning only the whole number portion, and the data type of that result will be a whole number. So now that we have the whole number of hours, I want to add on either the word hours or even just the letter h to the end of that before we calculate the remaining minutes. To add text to a value, we need to concatenate it to the existing result we've got. Now there is a function in DAX called concatenate, and in fact if I begin typing it in in front of the int function, you can see that the concatenate function is there, but it only allows me to concatenate two different things. I'm going to want to concatenate four different things altogether, and I don't want to get into nesting functions just yet, so I'm going to avoid using the concatenate function for this example, and instead use a simple ampersand operator. So after the double closed round brackets, I'm going to type in a space, type in an ampersand, and then in some double quotes, type in the letter H, followed by a space, and then close the double quotes. So any literal text in DAX needs to be enclosed in double quote characters. So at the moment, before I enter this formula, the data type of this column is a whole number. But if I press enter, having concatenated that text, now the entire column becomes text because it can't possibly any longer be a number. So to finish off this example, I now want to concatenate the value of remaining minutes. So for 138, we've got two whole hours, but there are 18 remaining minutes, which didn't divide evenly into 60. So let's just tidy up the layout of this. I'm going to add a line by pressing shift and enter just before the word int, and then press the tab key to indent that one space. And then after the letter H and I've closed the double quotes there, I'm going to add another ampersand and then shift and enter again. On the next line, I'm going to use a function called mod short for modulus or modulo, and this returns the remainder of a number after being divided. So I'm going to say mod, and then in some round brackets, the number will be the runtime field, and the divisor is going to be the number 60. I can then close the round brackets, and if I just press enter at this point, just to demonstrate that we've got the correct number, so 2h18, 1h49, and we can check all of those out, I can finally then just concatenate the letter m to the end of that. So again, in some double quotes, the letter M. So having done that, when I press enter again, there's my final calculator result, which looks pretty readable and would be nice to use for a label in some visuals in the report. So there you go, there's the basics of creating calculated columns in DAX. Over the next few videos, we'll introduce you to a few more functions and some other important concepts. So we hope you're looking forward to those videos. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.